No, not positive for a fact. I'm just kind of going over... I'm kind of at-living my script, or I'm going to try to practice what I'm saying to you. I'm kidding. I know what I'm going to say to you guys. Okay, so Black Forest Games. I think I already looked them up. So they're a German video game developer based in Offenburg. They were founded in 2012 of July by a team of staff of 40 staff members. Till then, such and such and such, boring details, as of June... <coughs> anyway... As of June 2019, the company employs 66 people. Well, at least they're still around and kicking. And they haven't closed, so they must be doing well, or their games must be making money. And for the games that they made was pretty much Gianna Sisters. They mostly make those games, which is kind of interesting. Besides that, they did Destroy All Humans, Bugsby, which was, I heard that game franchise is terrible. That that game franchise is terrible, but anyway. I guess they need to pretty much... Well, nah, it doesn't matter. Uh, also, they're making the Teenage Ninja Ninja Turtles The Last Rodent, so that's an interesting thing. So, I wonder if their anime style, or their animation style, will be kind of like Gianna's Sisters, or they're going to try something different. Kind of curious. Hope that one does well. I've, I've actually got an eye on that. Well, anyway. Let's get... Well, let me do my usual spell. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you're in. Welcome to... Well, this is not a walkthrough. This is not a playthrough. You guessed it. It's a verdict video. You would say this is early. You would say that there's a heart mode, uber heart mode, and some other modes too. But guess what? I think we have pretty much utilized and played this game to death that we really don't need to do anything else. So, this is the verdict video for Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams Director Owl's Cut. Hopefully this is the last time I say that blood freaking title. Let's, let's get reviewing. Alright, let's make sure the game volume is low so you guys will hear my clear and concise thoughts. Alright, so jumping right to it, what would I give this game out of 10? Uh, 8 out of 10! Yep, 8 out of 10 is very fitting. So, let's jump into the negative. And then, after we do the negative and the positive, like I do for every review, then we'll briefly talk about what's going to be the schedule tentatively this week, as I always try to do. Try to do, at least. Okay, so... Let's talk about the negative for Gianna Sisters. I made some notes because I've been taking notes like since the medium and the quarry. I feel like that that lets me do like a clear and concise thoughts and it makes everything pretty straightforward and I get to the point of what I'm trying to convey if the game sucks or the game is actually freaking awesome and you should play it right now. Or just rent it. Okay. And to some out, make sure my mute button's not on, and let's begin. So, the negative. First step. Enemy variety. So, you notice that we have to fight a bird... So, you know that in the first level you fight a bird, a bunch of birds, a pink, green, and blue bird, and a knight, and so on? Yeah, you're going to be fighting the same enemies from the very first level. It never changes. There is literally no variety in the enemies. And I noticed that too. As much as it cool pretty much doing a Sonic the Hedgehog pounce or just jumping on the enemies like Mario style on the enemies again... It's a little kind of repetitive killing the same enemies over and over again because the enemy variety is the same. Yes, they do add a kind of owl, invincible owl type that you can't kill and ghost types that you can kill with lasers. And they do mix it up in terms of the gameplay variety. But in terms of the negative, just strictly focusing on that enemy variety, there's really no... There's no enemy variety. There's not. Except for the bosses, but we'll get to that. 
because when you really think about it, the enemy variety is... It's kind of samey. Because you literally find the same enemies in all four levels, including the DLCs, which is the fourth level. It's just, there's just no... It didn't spice it up. I just felt like the enemy variety in terms of creativity compared to their... Well, compared to the level design, I, I don't know. I was kind of disappointed with the enemy variety. I mean, they didn't have to do it for this game. It's not necessary, and I can already tell it's not necessary, but... Yeah, that's one of the negatives that I couldn't overlook. It, it was just too samey. Alright, well, moving on to the next point. If they do a sequel for Gianna Sisters, I think they should add more to their enemy variety. That's something that's, like, developer, take notes, but they're not going to do it. They're going to probably just use the same enemies because, let's face it, Mario does use the same enemies, but at least he he makes them distinctive, unique, and they're not always the same color. Well, they are the same color palette, but they do something within the Super Mario franchise. But that's not really a note for the developers. That's just what, what I've noticed since... Mario, when it first came out, to Super Mario Wonder. At least they change up their enemies. Even though they keep using the same enemy, but they do something with it. Anyway. The other thing that was another negative, the second point. It's the first three levels. I think the, the environment constantly changes. I think it is great to look at. But it... At a point, by the first, all the way to the third level, it, the environment did seem samey. Like, we were at the same forest area, the same underground level, same castle. It was like a rinse and repeat. They kept using the same environment, copy and paste, from the first and the third level. It's only when they got to the, pretty much the fourth level slaps, hashtag fourth level slaps, that's where the environment constantly changed, and it looks so awesome when it got to the fourth DLC level. But the environment for the first three levels, I will admit, they were samey. And they just they just felt like they were the same, and it just felt like the same level over and over again. And I couldn't deny it. And it kind of got, well, not jarring, but just kind of like, eh, I've seen this before. I think that was my second one. And the third point, in terms of the negative, I was not even going to make this a negative, but I can't deny there were some bugs. It's minor bugs, but case in point, uh, it was the, I think it was the last, the next to last section on the third level, and I was about to beat it, and then proceed to fight the final boss on the third level. But I got glitched into the wall, and I couldn't escape it. The game was not that patched out that I got literally stuck. That was the only time, but there were a few performance issues. It was mostly the sound effects. Like, whenever I was attacking an enemy, the sound just slowly went out, and pretty much the music was there, but any sound effects or collecting crystals, the sound effect just went mute. I know they're not going to patch the game, because this type of game, no, they're, they're not going to spend the money or the time and the resources to fix the sound effects. It's kind of, what you see is what you get. And, I don't know, it, it's minor, and it didn't happen a lot, but the sound effects going out and getting stuck in the literal wall, like, literally, I can't deny it, it was kind of, it was, it was kind of, like, weak, but not too bad. Anyway, excuse me for a sec.
Okay, and I'm back. Now, where was I? Yeah, that's all the negative I had on Gianna's sisters. Not too bad. I thought I was going to rip on it for its visual style, but the visual styles are kind of harking back to like a 3D Mario, so... I didn't have any problem with the visual styles, and I don't think it was worth mentioning as a negative, so... Now, moving on to the positive. Okay, so... First off, right off the bat, it was the incredible level design that immediately won me over. From the very first level to the excellent, the really solid, excellent fourth level. Yeah, the level design for all of the, all the levels for just the main campaign. And as you can see, as yes, I click extra and the extra levels too. Yeah, the level design was pretty solid and actually pretty freaking amazing. I was actually pleasantly surprised. You know why the level design is incredible? That I'm kind of surprised. Okay, so throughout the whole game, you get to point A to point B. And throughout that, there are hidden collectibles, which will also be a separate positive. But you get to point A to point B, but oh, you found out that there is actually a point C going to point A point B and then you get into a either incredibly challenging environment that really changes up the game and makes it very expansive or there's an actually Easter egg of I love you and that surprised me in a very positive way and that that surprised me in a great way there's so many ways to get to point B and then you end up in point B anyway and it's the path to get to be is twisting. It's unpredictable. It challenges you in a very fun, satisfying way. The path is not always clear. In fact, you always find a secret path to get to pretty much be all the freaking time. And besides that, when you get to point B... But yeah, when you get to pretty much point B, when you're trying to get to it, it's just, it's never the same natural path. It's never straightforward. It's always a wrinkle, or you always are going to just have some... What I'm trying to say is, getting to point, to point A to point B is just, it helps with the incredible level design. And it really, really shows, and I think it deserves its own special mention. It really shows in the fourth level. But that's its own positive, so let's move on. So, another positive for this game that I was actually kind of struck too, the music is good. It's not great, but it's good for the context of this game, and I'll tell you why. Whenever you switch your characters from the punk sister or the, the kind of ballerina sister, as I like to call her, the music goes to an up beat pop music to a punk rock music and it really shows in the the boss battle too it's not the same music and it changes and i love that there have been many developers which i'll acknowledge because let's face it they took the time to create this actually kind of headbanger so let me look up the developers or the musical composers okay chris hustlebeck machine supremacy Fabian Dale Pryor. Well done on the soundtrack. You guys made the music seamlessly flow between when it switched characters, and that's what was amazing about it. The music changed whenever you change your environment. It, did, it also helped with the incredible level design, but it helped that it was so seamless of when the music changed. It wasn't like any like weird oddities whenever you switched the music. Whenever the character you're playing, it just feels distinctive. It feels unique. It feels the musical complement really fits the environment that you're changing to. It fits. And it really shows in the boss battle because they use the previous music that you're used to in the previous levels, the, like getting to the boss, and they just add it, uh, like a heightened tension to it. Not high intention. A heightened excitement for the music. So yeah, bravo on the music. I'm kind of surprised. I bet nobody really talked about the positive in terms of music, but hey, here we are. And, moving on, perfect transition. The duality, or the seamless transition between each sister, especially when you lock it on the very first level, is pr 
it's pretty perfect. If games replicate that, which they've done before, I think um, there was a game called... I think it was Outland. But I love when games do the whole switcheroo, like you're going to be playing on this color palette, or you're going to be switching on this color palette. I love seeing it when it's done right. And this is the game that it does right. Switching between the punk girl, the punk sister, and the ballerina sister is done on the fly. And it's done in a very concrete, seamless way that I'm not disappointed with. It just makes, and they're both essential. They're not like one was tacked on as DLC character or one was just a throwaway character. No, they're both essential. The ballerina, case in point, basically the red punk sister is Sonic the Hedgehog and it works because she has so many fast abilities and has every Everything you think of Sonic the Hedgehog, they just translate it in this game, and it really works. It makes some of the puzzles and find the bosses very satisfying, gratifying. And it's like, it's useful. It's useful for pretty much aerial attacks or just get into a secret area. But the ballerina girl is very perfect for jumping. She's slow, methodical, and good, like, balancing your, like, air time to get to a certain thing. She was perfect whenever there was some very crystal spikes. So the aerial airtime is perfect for her and she doesn't feel like a waste and it's very perfect. Plus, both of them in terms of boss battle, it makes sense to utilize it. In terms of like when I was on the very last, last boss, I even utilized the ballerina girl. I, I usually utilize the punk sister, but the ballerina sister just really worked in terms of jumping ability. It was actually, it was amazing. And especially amazing whenever you have a level design that has to utilize both sisters. And then it's pretty much, not a chef's kiss, but it's like a cherry on top. Whenever you have that level design that you have to utilize both sisters in a very cool and very creative way. That's where the level design really shines because of the duality. Without the duality system, I like to call it this game would not have worked very well and be very fun without it. It was a great idea, and if they do it in the future, which it's going to be hard to do in some certain games, I think this is a perfect example of that how you can do duality in a platformer. Yeah, it was worth mentioning. Another positive, and the positive keeps going on, and then we'll be finished. It's great boss battles. That pleasantly surprised me. The great, the boss battles evolve. They get, they're easy at the start because they're the tutorial boss. But the boss battles are creative. They're challenging. The challenge of what you learn throughout the their previous levels before you actually fight them. They're they have great environment, or great environmental awareness. They have excellent music with the boss battles. The boss battles change up. As you get to the third or second phase, the bosses are unpredictable, and they have great creature designs. I'm not disappointed. And if I have to say who was my favorite boss, it was clearly the Alverlord. Owl, Alverlord. You get the idea. The ninja, the ninja owl. That was my favorite one. For great reason. Yeah, if you... They didn't need to make the boss battles go this hard, but they did, and they actually excel because they're challenging, and they're fun. They're fun and challenging to fight. That's enough said. I think, in terms of it, I think that's all another cherry on top. Kind of surprised. Okay, another positive about this. Yeah, it's like what I was talking about, the point A to point B for the level design. Pretty much the hidden secrets that we get for the gallery in case in point. And I'm going to show this one because I was pretty proud to get this one. Yeah, getting Gurgle Walkie the Dragon. I don't know why. That was a delight. And getting Ninja Owl too. That was another delight. I don't know why I got him, but hey. But yeah, getting pretty much behind the scenes gallery or just kind of like I love you or just some weird Easter egg that shows up in the a path that you were not expected to show up or you get some pretty cool challenges and stuff that I was not expecting yeah 
the collectibles are worth collecting because the, the way to get them or the kind of leaps and hurdles and kind of blood and sweat, not the blood and sweat, but the pretty much the frustration and sweat that you take to get the collectibles are super fun. They feel earned because you took you you start learning with the game the game constantly evolves but the collectibles get put in very interesting spots that you just can't you just can't help but smile because the collectibles are fun to great they're really great to get you might be disappointed that it's a behind the scenes gallery it's just literally concept art it's concept art but i thought they were pretty great to get for some reason Maybe it's the platform of me, maybe it's the Mario fan of me, but hey, I, I enjoyed it. Plus, you plus it gets you to point B anyway, but the way that the, after you get the puzzle or solve the puzzle for the getting the collectibles, the way that it gets you to back on track is so cool in the most intricate way. Okay, so now, next to last positive that I had about Gianna Sisters. Pretty much the fourth level. I'll, I'll 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 show you the fourth level because I was actually impressed. The Overlord, which I read about Gianna Sisters, the Overlord was not part of one, two, and three. It used to be one, two, three on the PS3 slash Xbox 360. So that means this one is DLC. It is straight up DLCs, but we were lucky. We got the full edition. And the fourth level, it slaps. It slaps so hard. And what I mean about that is, basically the level design goes file up to 110. Yeah, the level designs go crazy. There's so much creativity, so much uniqueness, so much challenge. But even when you die in the fourth level, it just feels so fair. It feels fair. You're, you're having fun. You have a big stupid grin when you're doing the fourth level. It's just like they took all the best ideas, like I kept saying in my previous videos, from the first, second, and third. Eight, they took all the best aspects from them and just put them in here on the fourth level. And then to top it off, you have an excellent boss, excellent challenging and fun ending boss for it. It, it just feels fitting. It's like Gianna's sister was like, you know what? We're not going to make another sequel, so we're going to just put all our best ideas in this fourth level, and then hope the hope the player fan base enjoys it. I did. I absolutely did. It's not just the level design too. It's just the environment. It's the the new. Well, no, it wasn't the anime variety, but it's the new level design and new play style, the new gameplay variety. It just it's like the it's like the developers say the best ideas for last, and it really shows. Yes. I will say the fourth level is a great addition to this main campaign, and I think it's essential. I think you get the full you get the full Gianna sisters experience if you play the fourth level. In fact, I would say skip all the three levels, go straight to the fourth level. You mad men? But hey, yeah. So in conclusion, the fourth level slaps. That's the other thing. And the last, the last positive for this is the difficulty level. I think it was pretty balanced. I think by the third one, you you are in for a pretty much the salt. You are in for the salt. Third level is the hardest of all four levels, but it never felt unfair. It felt like the tricks that you could pull in these levels, in each level, it just didn't feel impossible. It felt like you know what. I think I can pull this. So I'm going to pull it. And then you feel extremely satisfied and you just feel that euphoria. You know it. When you beat that extremely hard level that was in your lunch. Third level was that for me. And it just felt... It was fair, but it was challenging. And I, I appreciate those games where it's fair, but challenging. Mario... I don't think it's like... I don't think it's like super challenging, but I think... There's a certain Mario game that it can be challenging. But as a pretty much a gamer, I do want my fair amount of challenge, but I don't want to be like super on super challenging that I can't beat the game. But I want a good balance where it's actually fair and it was my own stupid mistake that I couldn't get through the level, but I want enough challenge that you make me work for it. And Gianna's sister surprisingly did that. 
It just brought me back to a time of retro games where the difficulty level was paramount and it was above all, I'm going to kick your teeth in, but I'm going to teach you a lesson and get you to the finish line, but you're going to earn it. Yeah, I, I highly appreciate it. I respect it for that. So that's the last positive I have. Yeah, I think 8 out of 10 is pretty... I think it's pretty fitting for this game. Some people might get this low scores, but I give it an 8 out of 10. This was a hidden gem of a platformer that even I was kind of surprised about. I can't say I can recommend it because the the difficulty level really spikes on the third level. But if you're a Mario lover or you have like a, a fan of platformers in general, let's just say that, then you're going to enjoy this game. I think it's worth renting, but I don't think it's worth buying. So, yeah, that's my verdict video, 8 out of 10. I think that's pretty fitting. So, for the rest of the week, uh, so PlayStation Plus Essential comes for November. I'm going to say, tentatively, we're going to continue the L section in terms of alphabetical orders. I think that's going to be the main goal. But if we can finish it on each day, I think we're going to just try to do as much as we can. And then stop it at a certain point. That's the tentative schedule. Because once we're done with that, then we're going to actually get to the main three sections. So, of course, you can hit that like, comment, or subscribe. Or what's your favorite platformer? And, well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and stay tuned. Yeah, there's not going to be any more Gianna sisters. We're, we're done. So, have a good day.